O God, come to my aid. O Lord, hasten to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now, and evermore, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. <clears throat> May God have compassion on us and bless us. May he manifest his presence to us and have mercy on us that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples give thanks to you, O God. Let all the peoples confess and praise you. Let the nations be glad and rejoice, because you will judge the people with justice, and you will guide the nation from the earth. Let the peoples give thanks to you, O God. Let all the peoples confess and praise you. The earth has given her fruit. May God, our God, bless us. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now, and evermore, and to the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord is my light and my Saviour, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my Saviour, whom shall I fear? Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with exaltation. Know that the Lord himself is our God. It is he who made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with songs. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is eternal, and his truth continues from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now, and evermore and to the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord is my light and my Saviour, whom shall I fear? <clears throat> Behold in him the sea fled, and the Jordan returned to its source. Behold, in him the sea fled, and the Jordan returned to its source. O God, my God, at dawn I rise to you. My soul thirsts for you, and how often my flesh longs for you. In a desolate land, trackless and waterless, so I appeared before you in the holy place, to see your power and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips shall praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. Let my soul be filled with delight, and my mouth will praise you with joyfulness when I remember you in my bed. I meditate on you in the morning watches, for you have become my helper. And in the shelter of your wings I rejoice, 
my soul is glued behind you, and your right hand holds me tightly, but both trying in vain to take my life. We'll go into earth's infernal regions. They will be delivered to the hands of the sword. They will be the portion of jackals, but the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by him will be praised. For the mouth of those who tell lies will be stopped. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now, and evermore, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Beholding him, the sea fled, and the Jordan returned to its source. I beheld the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and rest on him. Alleluia. I beheld the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and rest on him. Alleluia. Behold in Christ the light which shines on all humankind, approaching to be baptized. The forerunner rejoices in his soul. His hand trembles as he presents him to the people, saying, Behold the one who delivers Israel. You set us free from corruption, O immaculate Christ. Clothed in our flesh, you were baptized, judging us worthy of forgiveness. Bowing your head before the Baptist, you crushed the head of Satan. When you were guiding the house of Jacob, the waves split and fled. Here the Jordan returns to its source. O Red Sea, why do you flee? And you, O River, why are you seized with fear? He who is wrapped in light as in a garment has covered himself with the waves of the Jordan today. O wonder, without flame he refounds the universe, without violence he reshapes the world. By his merciful descent into the waters he purifies all creation. By lowering himself into the hands of a mortal, he opens to us the heights of heaven. John the Baptist exclaims, How dare I touch your immaculate head? I who am dust before my Creator. O forerunner, fulfill what is right. Bear the generosity of divine mercy. Let us with the Baptist be filled with awe and joy. The baptism of the Immaculate Christ delivered the universe. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, and now, and evermore, and to the ages of ages. Amen. I beheld the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and rest on him. Alleluia.
All you works of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him throughout the ages. All you angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. All you heavens, bless the Lord. All you waters above the heavens, bless the Lord. All you virtues of the Lord, bless the Lord. Sun and moon, bless the Lord. All you stars of heaven, bless the Lord. Every shower and dew, bless the Lord. All you winds, bless the Lord. Fire and heat, bless the Lord. Dew and frost, bless the Lord. Ice and snow, bless the Lord. Light and darkness, bless the Lord. Let all the earth bless the Lord. Let it praise and exalt him throughout the ages. All you mountains and hills, bless the Lord. All you things that grow on the earth, bless the Lord. All you fountains, bless the Lord. Oceans and rivers, bless the Lord. Sea monsters and all things that move in the waters, bless the Lord. All you birds of the sky, bless the Lord. Beasts and all you cattle, bless the Lord. All you sons and daughters, bless the Lord. Let Israel bless the Lord. Let it praise and exalt him throughout the ages. Priests of the Lord, bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord, bless the Lord. All you spirits and souls of the righteous, bless the Lord. All you saints who are humble of heart, bless the Lord. O Ananias, Azarias, and Misael, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him throughout the ages. We bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We praise and exalt him throughout the ages. You are blessed, O Lord, in the expanse of the heavens, and praised and glorified and exalted throughout the ages. <clears throat> Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars and light. Praise him, you heavens of heaven. And you waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he spoke, and they were born. He commanded, and they were created. He has fixed them forever and ever. He has made a law, and it will not be bypassed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You dragons and all deaths, fire, hail, snow and ice. The storm wind all obeying his word, all you mountains and hills. All you fruit trees and cedars, you wild beasts and all cattle reptiles and winged birds, you kings of the earth and all peoples, all you rulers and judges of the earth, young men and virgins, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His praise is above heaven and earth, and he will exalt the power of his people. This is a song for all his saints, for the children of Israel, for people drawing near to him. Sing to the Lord a new song. 
Let his praise be sung in the church of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him who made him. And let the children of Zion exult in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing to him with drum and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. And will exalt the meek with his salvation. The saints will exalt in glory. And they will rejoice on their beds. The high praises of God will be in their throats. And two edged swords in their hands to pass judgment on the nations. And give rebukes among the peoples to bind their kings with chains. And their nobles with fetters of iron to pass judgment on them as God has written. This glory will be for all his saints. Praise God in his saints. Praise him in the expanse of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his infinite greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with psaltery and harp. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with strings and bells. Praise him with well-tuned cymbals. Praise him with symbols of victory. Let every breath praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning and now and evermore and to the ages of ages. Amen. The voice of the Lord. Alleluia. Is thundering on the waters. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the first epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. With power he has surrounded himself. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, with power he has surrounded himself. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forevermore. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, with power he has surrounded himself. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. With power he has surrounded himself. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. A reading from
from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Allow me to come to you now, for this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him to come. And after being baptized, Jesus immediately stepped up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And suddenly a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we celebrate the solemnity, one of the higher level feasts in the church calendar, the solemnity of the Theophany of Christ. Um, theophany um, literally means the revelation of God. And you may remember from our Epiphany service um, a few days ago that I said, we will now celebrate a season of Epiphany where we have a few Sundays illustrating the different aspects of the revelation of God to his people. So today we focus on the baptism of Christ. So what is baptism? The word itself comes from the Greek word baptizando, which literally means to immerse, to plunge, to dip between the surface of the water. But we dip people and things below water for various reasons. Um, in the New Testament church, in our church, um, after the coming of Christ, we see baptism as one of the major sacraments. It's the means by which people enter the church of God. It is how you become a Christian. Um, we may follow the teachings of Christ. We may seek to incorporate them into our lives. Um, but Christi being a Christian is not just something to which we give mental assent. It's something that happens to us, that transforms us from our old self into our new self by the grace of God. And that happens at baptism. We are regenerated into a new person. But Christ had no need of that. How can God have need to be incorporated into the life of God? What transformation was Christ in need of? None. So that can't be the type of baptism that he underwent. The other type of baptism that we see, um, that was being performed by John the Baptist, was a baptism of repentance. John was using the symbolism of water cleansing things to allow sinners to come to him and who wanted to turn their lives around and again walk the path of God in holiness and to come to him to be literally baptised, to be immersed below the surface of the water, to symbolically wash away their sins, that they may follow the word of God in their lives. But again, what need did Christ have for that? What need does the sinless one have to be washed of his sins? None. And yet there he was, approaching John to be baptised. John even, St. Theophilus, or the Blessed Theophilus rather, in the prologue from Ulchrid, um, a collection of Christian writings, he actually tells us that the reason St. John tried to protest Christ coming to him was because he wanted to demonstrate to the crowds 
that unlike the rest of us who are gathered here, this man has no need of a baptism of repentance. I need to be baptised by him. And yet here he is humbling himself. So why? Why did Christ come to be baptised? Well, we do know that the baptism of Christ marks the beginning of something, a change from all those years of silence in the gospel. We hear of his, uh, his nativity, we hear of his infancy uh, in some elements. In the apocryphal gospels, there were a couple of little tales from when he was a boy, and the last canonical gospel accounts we have of him is, of course, when he was found in the temple conversing with the religious elders and the, the learned men about matters of faith. And then the gospel account falls completely silent from the age of 12 up until, disputedly, the age of 30, when he began his public ministry, where he began to teach and preach and work wonders and came to fulfil that which the Father had sent him to do. So the baptism of Christ marks that transition from the one to the other. It also has the secondary purpose, which we must remember today, all of these, the, these celebrations of the revelation of God were initially celebrated on one day, on the 6th of January. That was originally Christmas Day, the Nativity of the Lord, and it was also today's feast, the Baptism of the Lord. So we must think of the Baptism as an extension of the Nativity, where God becomes human in order to sanctify matter, physical stuff that we touch, that we are, in order to save us, for otherwise how could we reach God, who is entirely spiritual and entirely other than what we are? That is why we have the holy icons, because Christ became incarnate, and we saw him and we can now venerate him using physical matter. And so also at the baptism, he descended into the water in order to sanctify water, to make water holy, that we may use it as a means of entering his holy church. And that is why he descended into the waters at his baptism by John. It was the baptism of his ministry when he began his great work that he had come to do. And it was a sign of the baptism of our ministry where we enter into him. A number of you have asked for baptism recently or asked to be received into the church. And today's talk might be particularly um, apposite for you in, in your situation um, so that you have an understanding of what baptism actually is and what it means to be joined to the Church of Christ. There were in the earlier centuries of the Church some wonderings about the baptism of Christ. There was a, a heretic, famous heretic, the Archbishop of Constantinople, Nestorius, who believed that Christ did not, Christ was not the eternal God from the moment of his birth, um, but that he was born as a normal human being and that the divinity entered him at his baptism. Um, so we must be careful to avoid um, these teachings, which still float around in some Christian circles today. No, the eternal God became human at his incarnation, and that is what we celebrate at Christmas. I used to be friends, we've long since lost touch, but I, I used to be friends with somebody who studied at a Catholic university. Um, and if you can hear background noises, that's the cat. Um, and, and this uh, friend of mine um, boarded with somebody who was Ukrainian Greek Catholic, and he would give thanks and offer a blessing over everything he ate and everything he drank, right down to a glass of water. And if you imagine every time we take a sip from a bottle of water or a glass, we give thanks to God. That's so unusual in our day, and it can be ridiculed and scoffed at as excessive piety. But I'm not so sure. When we consider parts of the world where our life, as we live it day by day, would seem completely alien and however difficult we might believe our lives to be and however difficult they might be in actuality uh, people from those parts of the world would look at us and think that we live in luxury we can do as we please for the most part we can go to work and earn our bread even if it's something we don't always want to do 
we can go to school and get an education and better ourselves and we can immerse ourselves in the life of the church if that is our choice but for these people much of their day if you look at the water aid websites or advertisements they forego earning their bread they forego an education because for hours each day all they do is walk for miles and miles and miles and miles just to find water just so that they can drink water and hydrate themselves just so that they can wash themselves all of the things that we take for granted here in greater manchester we are known for our rain and we complain about it the luxuries that we have the necessities that other people don't have and we complain about the rain how ungrateful we are sometimes and um, so yes i think that um, my friend's friend's attitude to water was the better one because christ teaches us a different way and if we look at the interaction of god with his people throughout our salvation history water features very prominently we've heard about some of it in the readings this evening and if we go right back to the creation story in genesis we see that the holy spirit hovered over the face of the waters waters representing chaos the unfinished nature of creation and from that by god the father speaking the word the son on the breath the spirit of his mouth creation came into being and order was brought to the chaos that had existed and the nothing that had existed before here we see the first action by the way of the trinity the three divine persons operating as one god with one will and one purpose the father spoke the word on the spirit of his mouth and creation came out of nothing so we see that in creation we see naaman the leper who was told to lower himself in the river jordan seven times in order to receive healing we see in the mythical literature in genesis um, noah who um, and who with his family survived um, the flood which wipes out all of the sinful world the cleansing nature of water to bring about salvation that humankind might start afresh um, we see the altar of Baal um, despite being dry nobody came to accept the offerings on the fault to the false god but to the god of Abraham doused with water the fire came still and burnt the offering we see the power of God being revealed through water and of course most significantly perhaps we have the passing of the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt into freedom in the land that God had promised for them through the waters of the Red Sea they passed through the water in order to receive freedom and the life in God so I think that's a very different approach that we ought to take to water um, the other great revelation today, of course, and we've hinted at this, is the Trinity. So we have hints of the Trinity throughout the Old Testament. We have, as I've mentioned, the creation. We have the appearing to Abraham, the first call of Abraham, where God appeared to him. And if you read the accounts from Genesis, it's quite confusing if you don't understand what this is pointing to. For he speaks of the Lord appearing to him. And yet later we hear he's referring to them and to they in the plural and then there were three people who appeared to be there and yet he addresses them as one now there have been different theories about this throughout the history of the christian church i know saint john chrysostom told us that this was christ with two attending angels however the the consensus of um, the patristic and saintly witness and the liturgical witness of the church was that this was the holy trinity taking on angelic form in order to appear to abraham and to call him for the great purpose that he had for him and we hear that today in the great antiphon that we sang last night and this morning when you O lord were baptized in the jordan the worship of the trinity was revealed for the voice of the father bore witness to you when he called you his beloved son and the spirit in the form of a dove confirm the truthfulness of that word and so we have today the first explicit revelation of god as father son and holy spirit not 
as a tale from the beginning of the creation of time and not as an unclear apparition of angels uh, appearing as three and one simultaneously, but the first explicit revelation. We hear the voice of the Father, this is my beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descends upon him as a dove to confirm what we had heard. The communion of the Trinity, three persons existing in complete harmony of, of life, of purpose, of will, of oneness, is a microcosm, an image of what the church is called to be. So by our baptism in water, we share in that oneness. We also share in the royal priesthood of Christ. There are two types of priesthood within the church. We have the priesthood that is exists in its fullness in the bishops, and that is shared to a lesser degree by the priests, the presbyters and deacons, such as myself. And then there is the priesthood into which we are all baptised. And that's called the baptismal priesthood, the priesthood of all the baptised. And that is what we enter into when we take upon ourselves the holy sacrament of baptism in the refreshing and cleansing waters of God. And what does that mean? Well, a priest is a person who offers sacrifice. And most importantly, in the ministerial priesthood, that refers to the holy sacrifice of the altar at the divine liturgy, at the mass, where the body and blood of Christ are made truly present. And in a sense, in a very real sense, we enter into the timeless sacrifice that Christ made for us of himself on the cross, where he was both the priest doing the offering and the victim, the one who is offered. That's for the ministerial priesthood. But for the baptismal priesthood, for those of us, all of us who are called through our baptism to share in the priesthood of Christ in that way, what does this mean? Well, we come to the altar of God and we are fed with the holy sacrifice, with the body and blood of the Saviour. And then the service ends and we go out into the world. And that is where our priesthood begins. We are to be priests of creation. And the sacrifice that we offer to God is the sacrifice of the world, of all of creation, which we are to sanctify and purify and hallow and consecrate and offer back to God. And we do this through praying for the world. We do this through our daily actions, through our acts of charity, through our concern for other people? Is there an act of kindness that we can do? What are the conversations that we have for people in our school life, in the workplace? Do they serve to transform the world from evil to good? If not, why not? Because that is our baptismal calling. And look, we all fail. I think about some of the conversations I have at work and I think, was it right for me to take part in that? And we have confession. So that we, like the followers of John the Baptist, can come to Christ, confess we have fallen short, receive his forgiveness and start again. But the starting again is the most important part. For that is what our baptism is all about. It's about offering ourselves and the world and all of creation to God in sacrifice. And that's hard. So for those of you who have asked recently to explore um, what Christianity is, to perhaps explore the possibility of joining the church, and who have, I know one of you has explicitly asked for baptism, um, I ask you to consider and think about these things. And that is why we don't baptise people overnight, generally. There is a period of, of, of exploring and settling into the life in Christ before we begin to actually walk that path before we are received and make that commitment. And we have plenty of time, which I think we need actually for all of us. Um, and so may we all focus on our baptismal calling, on the baptismal priesthood revealed to us today in the waters of the River Jordan, when our Saviour descended into the water and sanctified it for the sake of our salvation. Thanks be to God.
Sanctus Foti, Sanctus Immortalis, Miserere Nobis, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, according to your great mercy, we entreat you, hear us, and have mercy on us. For the Holy Church, which reaches to the ends of the earth, for our Bishop Gregory, for Bishops Jonah and Pallas, for the Bishops of our sister churches, Martin, Mark, Paul, Johann, Gabriel, and Gregory, and for all our family in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison. For the blessed founders of the holy churches of God, whose memory is eternal, and for all our departed mothers, fathers, sisters and brothers, in particular for the servants and handmaids of God, the deacon Maxime, the priest Thierry, the Archbishop Vigil, the Presbytera Rachel, the Priest Alphonse, Regina, Morris, Stella, Patrick, the nun Christiane, and the newly departed servants of God Roger, and all who are here and everywhere laid to rest, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison. For all who bear fruits and do good works in our holy and venerable church, for those who serve and those who sing, and for all the people praying with us, who await the great and abundant mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, protection, remission and absolution of the sins of the servants and handmaids of God who live in this town and our neighbouring cities, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Let us say with all our heart and with all our spirit, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer, 
and let our cry come to thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the Lord who rose from the dead at the prayers of the most holy, pure, immaculate Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary, of Saint Melanda the Paris, the patroness of our church, of the Holy Mare Bearers, of Saint Gregory of Nyssa, Saint Tomian of Armagh, and Saint Dermot of Innis Plotran, whose memorial we keep today, and of all the saints, grant us his peace and eternal life. Amen. Gracious Mother of our Redeemer, enduring forever, gate of heaven and star of the sea, give aid to your people, who though falling strive to rise again. O Maiden who gave birth to your holy Creator, to the wonder of all nature. Ever Virgin, after as before, you received the Ave from the mouth of Gabriel, 